Hi, I'm Rick. Welcome to Elbow Shots. Today we're going to do an LVT tile with grout over existing sheet vinyl. Let's take a look. In part one of three of LVT with grout, we took a look at prep, layout, and spreading adhesive. In this video, part two, I'll show you some tips for cutting, fitting, and setting the tile. While we wait for the glue to dry, we can remain productive by pre-cutting some of our tile. I use a sharp utility knife to score a line in the wear layer of the tile and break it along that line. For the first one, I used a tape measure and framing square. For the rest, I used the first piece as a template and a guide. As you take tiles off of the stack, you'll have less range of motion for the break. You can grab a handful to take care of that. Not quite ready. With the framing square positioned in a certain way, I can use my knee to stabilize it. I use the thumb of my knife hand as a flintstone break to stop my cut. LVT is very resilient, but it can crack. A good set of tin snips will help make some of the compound cuts easier. With no transfer of adhesive, it looks like we're ready to start setting tile. Using my index finger as a guide to hold the first tile flush at the door edge, I place it along the control line. Then using two archy spacers as a guide, I place the second tile along the control line. There's a very good reason this is called the control line. It is the foundation of our layout. We work from the control line, then laterally, and pyramid into the corners. Once I get to a point where I can begin setting tiles laterally, I turn and start setting the pre-cut pieces. This gives me a little more room to move and work. You can slightly reposition the tiles as you go by brooming them closer or away from the spacers with a swipe of the hands, or you can lift and shift. Continue with these two rows until you have to make cuts, moving the spacers as you go. With the control line locked in place, we can begin setting tiles laterally. If this was a larger room, I might, might start closer to the center, but for this room, this here works. I usually set all of my full tiles and pre-cuts first. This pre-cut was pre-miscut. That can happen. It's binding on the end of the wall, preventing it from rotating into position against the spacer. I could probably lift it out of there to recut it, but it touched down pretty good. Let's see if I can relieve the pressure with a hook knife. Yeah, nope. Gonna have to pull it out, hopefully without breaking it. Change its vibration by wiggling it, lifting it up and out. Then I can trim it with the tin snips and reset the tile. A quick note about the Archie spacer. The bottom rail is angled slightly to increase the amount of contact on the tile, making it more stable and less likely to slide around. Setting tiles diagonally is what is meant by pyramiding, and it helps keep you from running off on a tangent. Making sure your diagonal corners line up as you go will minimize the appearance of saw toothing. With all of our full tile and pre-cuts set, we're ready to start the fun cuts. I use my tape measure a lot but I like to line pieces up in position and mark the cuts that way. Here I'm going to use both methods, marking the end of the threshold, then measure my distance to cover. We have 14 inches to the threshold and 14 and a half to the drywall. I'm going to allow an eighth of an inch from the drywall at the end of the threshold to cover the area exposed by the casing reveal and a quarter of an inch down the rest of the length of the drywall. First, I want to transfer my stop line to my other marks and freehand my curve. For this one tile, I have two different straight cuts, a freehand cut and a snipped cross cut. With the freehand cut, I allow my knife to continue into the waste area, so when I break off the long scrap, I have a good starting point. Huh, looks like I'm about three millimeters too long. I guess I forgot to give Archie his space. Well, I'll retrim it with the snips and slide it back under the casing. 
Notice how the spacers provide a ramp to slide the tile into position. Ooh, that is sticky glue. Get out of there, Archie. There is a subtle difference. You can use a tape measure if you prefer, but I think it's faster and easier to mark cuts like this. You can use a pair of pliers or channel locks to gain leverage when snapping off small pieces. This HVAC hand seamer does a nice job following the lines though. For pieces with multiple cuts, I'll make the big cut first. Then it's easier to mark and to make the smaller, more complex cuts. I'll do the same with this next piece, which will have a tapered cut to width due to the buildup of drywall mud that they usually have in the corners. Then mark for the door trim. I can't tell you how many times I've seen overcuts in doorways. Usually it's right at the reveal area between the jam and the casing. There is a super easy fix for that. Stop short of the corner and scribe an arc. It will give you more coverage in that area. Here's the piece I've been looking for since I started. Looks like I'll have to retrim it though. It looks like it's pivoting on the corner of the drywall. So I'll take a little more off and slide it into place. There we go. Now that we have all of our tiles installed, this is a 75 pound three section roller. There's independent movement of the rollers on a common axle because floors aren't that flat. Take your time when rolling to allow the roller to do its job. It's important to roll in both directions because floors aren't that flat. That's it for this part of the job and concludes this video. Click on the link for part three to see how I grout LVT or the other link if you missed part one. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.